Live from the Valley's Choice for local news, this is KVLY News 11 at 6. Good evening. Federal aviation investigators say they've never seen anything like the sight of Payne Stewart's jet crash. They began sifting through thousands of pieces of rubble this morning. The Learjet fell so far and so fast, many parts are still buried in that South Dakota field. Today, authorities confirmed the death of a sixth passenger, golf course designer Bruce Borland. Mark Daly joins us live from near Mina, South Dakota. Mark? Plane crash investigations always take a long time, but this one is moving extremely slowly. That's because the plane fell 40,000 feet from the sky, and much of the wreckage is still buried deep in the ground. Soon after the sun came up, investigators were at the crash site, looking for clues buried deep in this South Dakota cow pasture. Even with heavy equipment at their disposal, federal authorities say it'll be several days before they're able to find some of the thousands of pieces of plane scattered in the muck. It's going to take some time to figure out how, how we pull the wreckage out, and we want to make very sure that before we start touching things, that we are certain that we're not destroying some evidence. Among the things they're looking for out there is a cockpit voice recorder. But even if they do find it, it's unlikely the recorder will provide any useful information because it runs on a 30-minute cycle and then records over itself. At mid-afternoon, investigators were still mapping out a plan how to remove the wreckage from the site here. And once they figure that out, they'll take thousands of tiny pieces of glass, metal, plastic, and wiring to a nearby hangar where they can examine it more closely. Charlie, back to you. Did they give you any idea of a timetable of how long it would take them to assemble that big jigsaw puzzle? They've never had a situation like this before, so they don't know exactly how long it will take, but they say they will be here several days. Okay, very good. Thanks a lot, Mark. Appreciate it. The NTSB says video would help a lot in that crash investigation. Amy Polacco joins us live now from the Air National Guard in Fargo. Amy, what can you tell us? Well, two of these fighter jets flew right alongside the Learjet that crashed crash yesterday. As you can see here in the cockpit, there's a tiny camera. It's this little black tube that's facing straight ahead. Basically, all it's recording is whatever's going on in front of the plane. And the National Guard says it is giving the NTSB its videotape but it's warning them there's just not much there. Clouds and sky. That's what the Air National Guard says video from its fighter jets will show, but sound is another story. There is audio tape on it, and the NTB, NTSB is getting that audio tape, the uh, radio communication between our pilots and the FAA and the uh, uh, Western Air, Air Defense Sector uh, controllers. And Vic says video was not first on pilots' minds because following that runaway Learjet was a task in itself. Up at that altitude, uh, that airplane was flying high enough and slow enough where <clears throat> for us to even stay alongside of it uh, was virtually impossible. Now the videotape would also record these fighter jets' speed and altitude, which could shed some light on what happened yesterday. Colonel Anvik says it never reached a point where they were discussing shooting the Learjet down. He said that would be more problematic because then you'd have a lot of debris over a much wider area. Amy, is there any chance that there is any other video out there from any other source, a uh, video of the Learjet in air? Well, rather than uh, Colonel Anvik says that a lot of the other planes that were, that were you know, flying alongside the Learjet uh, had pretty much the same setup with the camera right in the front shooting out the front and capturing only that. So it would be the same situation. But the NTSB's Robert Francis did put out a plea for help today, asked that anyone, anyone in the public who was recording the crash with a video camera or something, come forward with that video, could help the investigation. Amy, one more quick question for you. I know the pilots of those F-16s are supposed to be debriefed. Do you know if that has occurred yet? We know that they have talked uh, by phone to the NTSB today, and um, that's all we know right now. They have told them what happened. There's no plans to go down there and talk to them in South Dakota right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Amy. A National Union representative says Kyle Bell's escape is a case of government privatization gone wrong. Nancy Van Meter told North Dakota lawmakers the state has to be careful in hiring private firms to take over public jobs. Meantime, the television program America's Most Wanted is planning to show a reenactment of Bell's escape. The program profiled Bell after he escaped from a tr prison transport bus in New Mexico. Show producers are coming to North Dakota tomorrow to do interviews. The new segment will air November 13th if Bell isn't caught before then. 
Around the region tonight, a Long Prairie, Minnesota woman whose daughters were found floating in a lake has been charged with murder and attempted murder. Lisa Patchen is accused of deliberately driving her car into a lake and leaving her two daughters to drown. One died, the other's in critical condition. A Burnsville, Minnesota doctor has been sentenced to 10 days in jail for assault in a road rage incident. Dr. Thomas Valente pleaded guilty last month to striking 69-year-old Virginia Hendrickson after she cut him off on a highway ramp in August. And former SLA fugitive Sarah Jane Olson is looking for financial support. She goes on trial in Los Angeles in January for allegedly planting pipe bombs under police cars back in 1975. Olson held a news conference today to ask for help paying her attorney's fees. Fargo police officers may soon be making their rounds in schools. The school board is considering a partnership that would put two full-time officers in some junior high and senior high schools. The proposal would be an extension of the current D.A.R.E. program. One officer would spend time at North High, Ben Franklin, and Woodrow Wilson. The other would be assigned to South High and Discovery Junior High. Their primary focus won't be enforcement, uh, but certainly they are police, and if the need be there, they, they would be in an enforcement mode. If the school board votes to take part in the COPS partnership, the city commissioners have to give their final approval. If that happens, officers could be in the schools after the first of the year. Fargo's airport authority is holding off on demolishing the old terminal tower. Bids came in $13,000 over projections. Airport director Sean Doberstein expected it would cost $70,000 to take off the top four floors of the terminal. But busy schedules of local contractors translated into an $83,000 job. The board will rebid the project in the next construction season. Well, fish fishing can be considered an art. But have you ever thought that some tools anglers use could be considered art as well? Well, the Stone Report is next at 6. You are watching the Valley's Choice for local news. KVLY News 11 with Charlie Johnson, Robin Huebner, meteorologist Tom Shemansky, and Dan Hammer Sports. Industry leaders don't follow trends. They make their own. The 2000 Voyager. The result of 16 years of award-winning minivan innovations. But its most remarkable achievement? Voyager is America's lowest price minivan. Opportunities like this don't last long. See your Chrysler and Plymouth dealer today. Shut out winter with a new storm and screen door from Menard. Choose from a traditional or crossbook style from Mastercraft by Larson. With a lifetime warranty on sale just $99 after $5 rebate. This classic brown model only $109 after rebate. Keep your floors clean with these durable entry mats from Tribune. On sale in a number of sizes, $4.99 to $16.99 each. Step on to big savings at Menards. Save big money at Menards. It's the greatest. Fishing decoys started out as a way for anglers to catch more fish. But somewhere along the line, they became collector's items. On tonight's Stone Report, we meet a crazy Minnesota man whose work is among the most valuable. Right, Mel? Yeah, John Jensen's uh, work is so popular, he'll probably never uh, catch up with his demand. And his pieces also fetch record high prices. Okay. Okay. John's been carving for more than 60 years, but fishing decoys is a relatively mm. new undertaking. Well, I like fish. You know, I used to go fishing all the time, and also I, I was starting to collect spearing decoys. And I decided I like nicer looking ones, so I just started making them myself. What's happened since then is almost hard to believe. I, I, when I did this one, I charged $500, and then uh, went from 500 to 750 750 and went to to uh, 1,000, then I went to 1,500, and right now the, the person who owns this now has been offered 2,700 for it. Some say John Jensen is the most collectible living carver. The antique dealers can't figure why. I'm not dead yet, you know. And at the rate things are going, there are going to be a lot of unhappy decoy collectors out there. But I want is trout. You know, I, I like to quit doing trout and go on to something else, you know. Do it. Yeah, uh, but I have I'm back ordered three, four years. Really? Yeah. Uh, so I have to keep on until I get the orders filled. Are you taking more trout orders? No. 
Unless it's a friend, you know, or something like that. Yeah, otherwise, no. So on the, except for a very special occasion, John supplies his decoys to wholesalers, and that's where you have to buy them. But occasionally, you will see one turn up on eBay, for example, on the webpage uh, uh, being auctioned off. Has to work more hours in the day, although he probably feels he's doing enough. Well, I didn't put, include it in the story, but he told me he is sick of carving trout. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess that's uh, yeah, out of the question then, yeah. right? <laughs> Working more. Thank you, Mel. Yeah, we kind of got that drift from him, yeah. Yeah. To carve something else for a change. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nice good, day. Good looking day. Yes, Warm. the wind wasn't a factor either. And uh, right. I tell you, if anyone wants to complain about this, uh, 80 years ago today it was uh, below zero across the entire northern part of the country. So <laughs> wow. I remember that. <laughs> can get cold. Oh, you do, huh? That's okay. You'll have to tell us sometime, Charlie. Uh, maybe later on. Uh, but it looks like we're going to have some warm weather for the next couple of days. We'll tell you more if we take a look at Halleck, Minnesota's forecast tomorrow about 51 degrees. They're the best-selling minivans in the world. The most innovative ever. The most imitated. The most trusted. The most versatile. Dodge Caravan. It's not only the yardstick. It's the ruler. Starting at 18525. If you haven't found any hidden treasures in your home, Maybe you're not looking in the right place because Norwest can help you access a hidden treasure, your home equity. Now's the best time to apply for a Norwest home equity loan because you can make no payments for 90 days. And it's easier than ever to apply in person, over the phone, or online. For a better way to find treasure in your home, contact Norwest today. I love you. I love you. Got another one. I'll handle this. If you love meat on your pizza, you'll love the Meat Lover's Pizza from Pizza Hut. The Meat Lover's Pizza has six toppings, juicy pepperoni, spicy Italian sausage, succulent ham, sizzling bacon, and mouth-watering beef and pork toppings. Paul, for only $8.99. $8.99, how can you top I that? I love you. I love you. Back. Back. Now, buy a medium Meat Lover's Pizza from Pizza Hut and get a second medium pizza for just six bucks. What can you get at Mills Fleet Farm? Quality workwear from Dickies. Pocket t-shirts, twill jeans, long sleeve work shirts, dungarees, and a whole lot more Dickies workwear is on sale. So is a 40,000 BTU ready heater. Fill it with number one fuel oil or kerosene and you've got heat for over 11 hours. It's only $139.99. If it's on your list, it's in our store. Mills Fleet Farm. Local storm team weather with KBLY News 11 Chief Meteorologist Tom Shemansky. Well, looks like we're going to be in for a steady diet of mild temperatures throughout most of the week coming up. Uh, not much rain until maybe around Friday, but uh, at this point in time, the weekend is looking pretty good, too. So let's check out your question. And this is what Charlie wanted to know. Uh, on the average, the temperature drops below the donut. How many times per year here? The reason I'm saying that is because it's now officially donut season as record lows are now below zero. Isn't that exciting? 32, 42, 52, or 62 times. We'll find out soon, but now, the current conditions and uh, a little football action and Moorhead. Right now, yes, as captured by the roving weather cam. 55 degrees to the dew point, 26, 32 percent the humidity, south winds at 9, and the barometer 29.99, and it is steady. Grand Forks right now, 53, dew point, 26, winds are south at 7, and the barometer 29.97, and it's rising. Well, how do we do today? 59 to 27, no rainfall of any kind. And at Grand Forks, 56, 23, and no precipitation. Well, tomorrow, not much different from today. We're looking close to 57 or so, give or take a few degrees, with uh, probably a few clouds in the morning and lots of sun, especially during the afternoon hours, but a steady wind as well. All right, well, let's check out the USA satellite radar composite. And just like yesterday, most of the action in the corners. Southeast, some showers in Florida, some more in the northeast. Other activity in the southwestern part of the country and more in the northwest, whereas much of the middle, we'll say about 75 to 80 percent 
of the lower 48, not experiencing much else than just a few clouds. As you can see right here, some bright white clouds spinning through Minnesota, North Dakota, and also southern Canada. Let's take a look out into the Pacific, and there's a well-defined storm system. We'll geographically orient you. There's Alaska, western Canada. Here's the west coast of the country right here. This is definitely much stronger than the series of storms that has been moving on in. So as that moves our way, by Friday, that could bring a little bit of light rain, maybe mixing with snow Friday night, but nothing heavy. You can see right here, these clouds are moving quickly to the east. So later on tonight, many areas may experience clear to partly cloudy conditions. There's low pressure located near Regina, Saskatchewan, with a warm front cutting right through the middle of North Dakota, followed by a cold front. Not much of a cold front because the air behind it is of Pacific origin rather than Arctic origin. So all we're going to get is a wind shift and not much difference in temperature tomorrow. But the winds will be gusty, especially during the first part of the day. Right now, winds are southeast or south under 13 miles per hour. The combination of clouds and wind should hold the temperatures up tonight. Speaking of which, how about these temps? You can see back in Montana, temperatures in the 70s. 77 in Rapid City, Salt Lake City at 71. A little cooler to the east, Marquette, Michigan, 34 and 59 right now in Chicago. St. Louis at 69 in Des Moines, Iowa at 68 degrees. Locally, 46 in Bemidji, 40 at International Falls, double fours in Bedette. Right now, Winnipeg, 48 degrees, double nickels in Devils Lake, 56 in Jamestown, and 57 right now in Aberdeen. Some sky spies for you in Edgeley, Gene had 61, along with Joe and Pelican Rapids, and a Bedette, a little cooler. Harold said it was 45 degrees there, and the winds were not much of a problem. Could be 45 again in Bedette tomorrow with 40s up north, 50s elsewhere, getting close to 60 in the southern areas, and there's that 60 degree line roughly running from Jamestown to just north of Bismarck and westward, 70s in the Banana Belt near Rapid City for highs on Thursday. But tomorrow, we're looking at high pressure moving on in. Now, this front here will generate a few clouds in the morning, but no rain. If there's any rain at all, that should occur mainly to the north in Canada. Now, as a high moves overhead tomorrow night, many areas will drop down into the 20s. And then on the back side of the high, the winds return out of the south, and that should warm us up on Thursday. That could bring a little bit of light rain to the picture on Friday. Right now, Saturday and Sunday are looking like temperatures in the 50s, and by Halloween, might be near 60 with sunshine. How about that? Here's your forecast for tonight. Variable clouds, southeast to south winds at 6 to 23, becoming west-northwest at 5 to 16 later on. And 38 in Fargo, 35 in Grand Forks, 33 in Roosevelt, and 36 in Purim. For tomorrow, looks partly to mostly sunny and breezy. West-northwest winds at 8 to 27. And about 50 in Cavalier, 60 in White Rock, 56 in Carrington, and 58 in Purim. And moving further ahead, sunny in the morning on Thursday, and then partly cloudy and becoming breezy. Light and variable winds will turn south at 6 to 25, lows from 24 to 33. And Thursday, not much change, 55 in Grand Forks, about 52 in Cavalier, and Beijou, about 54. And looks like for Friday, chance for rain showers, 51. And then Saturday, 55, and Sunday, 58, maybe 60, with partly sunny skies, breezy every day, as you can see on the bottom of the graphic. This time of the year, we're going to see a steady diet of wind, which is quite typical. All right, just what Robin wants to know. Mm. How many times Choice right E could be here. not enough? That, seem, that seems like too many, all of them. They I'm going to go with 32. Okay. I'll go 42. Well, believe it or not, 52 times mm. a year we do it. That, that seems like a lot. And uh, last year we didn't have that many, not nearly that many. Right, it was a warm didn't. year last year. That's any night it drops below zero. Mm -hmm. So that, one Instead below. of word time, it should have been days, 52 yeah. days below zero. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Stocks lost more ground today. The Dow Jones Industrial Average dropped about 48 points to 10,302. NASDAQ was down more than 4 to 2,811 and a half. And Standard & Poor's 500 stock index was off nearly 12, closing just under 1,282. It is uh, playoff night in high school football in Minnesota. Dan is out in Moorhead. At Nemzik Field. That's right, Charlie and Robin. This is opening night for prep football playoffs in Minnesota. Also, there are a couple of North Dakota football playoff games. And here at Moorhead State, Moorhead Eye opens the playoffs. We'll visit with Spuds head coach Steve Connolly and have the rest of the sports for you next. The stock report is brought... Has depression struck someone you love? Here are some warning signs. Sleeping too much. Loss of appetite. Isolation. Loss of concentration. Lack of energy. Feeling of worthlessness. Uncontrollable crying. Excessive feelings of guilt. Hopelessness. Suicidal thoughts. If someone you love has a problem with depression or alcohol, Prairie can help you find the right resources. If you don't get help at Prairie, please get help somewhere. Late breaking sports from your town and beyond with KVLY News 11 Sports Director, Dan Hammer. 
The road to the Metrodome begins tonight for Minnesota prep football teams. First round playoff games will be held in all five classes tonight. Here at Nemzik Field, Moorhead High opens the Class 5A Section 8 playoffs by hosting Bemidji and Spuds coach Steve Connolly is here. Steve, with this uh, playoff format, uh, you not only have to be good, you have to be a little bit lucky too, don't you? Oh, there's no doubt about it. To win six in a row this late in the season, you know, hopefully you're hitting on all cylinders, but the ball's got to bounce your way a few times. Yeah. You played uh, Bemidji earlier this year, and uh, you ran the ball successfully. Is that the name of the game tonight? Well, I think so. We've got to establish the line of scrimmage, and if we can do that, uh, you know, it's going to benefit us if we can't. Um, I think at that point in the season, we weren't as good a throwing team, and, and at this point, we can throw it a little bit better. So. This football team really matured through the second half of the season, didn't it? Yeah, you know, some of the kids stepped it up, and I think they felt a little bit more comfortable in their positions, and, and the, you know, the success came then. Yeah. Uh, the offensive line, is that an area tonight where you think you have a big advantage uh, against Bemidji? Well, you, you know, defensively, they're, they're a pretty good team, so, you know, I'm hoping we can establish that and, and be real physical with them, and, and if that comes or is the case, you know, I think we'll be successful. Okay, Steve, good luck tonight. Thanks a lot, Dan. That's Steve Connolly, the head coach of the Spuds, and we'll have highlights of this game and many others from Minnesota and North Dakota, including Fargo South at the uh, Fargo Dome tonight against Grand Fork Central. That coming up on a special edition of the Highlight Zone tonight after the baseball game. Well, the University of Minnesota is banning its men's basketball team from postseason play for one year. The move comes on the heels of alleged academic misconduct. Minnesota President Mark Udoff says the ban applies to both the NCAA and the NIT tournaments. In addition, the school is placing the team on probation for an unspecified time. Now, Udoff expects the school and the NCAA to impose further sanctions when the final results of an investigation are turned over to the NCAA. And to the current players, Udoff has this. This program to continue rebuilding and to maintain the integrity of the institution and to move forward in the basketball program and to support Coach Munson. We must demonstrate good faith and take meaningful action to repair the damage that has been done by others. Udoff expects the final results of the investigation to be turned over to the NCAA sometime next month. Well, the World Series resumes tonight in New York. The pressure is on the Braves. They need a win. They're down two games to none. You know, any team that has good pitching like we have, we can always reel off three in a row or so. So we've always been able to do something like that, and it's just no different now. Uh, I, I don't really think we have uh, any uh, emotional or mental advantage over them other than the fact that we've been pitching really well. The pitching matchup tonight, Tom Glavin will go for the Braves, Andy Pettit for the Yankees. It all begins here at 7 tonight on TV 11. And the new hockey polls are out nationally. The USA Today American Hockey Poll has North Dakota 5th, in the hockey online poll, the Sioux are number three. Boston College and Maine are number one and two in each poll. And Charlie and Robin, the PGA, is rearranging the playing schedule for its two tournaments this weekend. They will not play on Friday. That is the day that there will be a memorial service for Payne Stewart in Florida. That's understandable that mm -hmm. they would do something like that. Definitely. In, in fact, I'm a little bit surprised that they actually uh, have gone through with the uh, PGA Tour right. Championship this weekend. They could have uh, postponed or canceled. I thought maybe that's what they would do, yeah. yeah. Okay, thanks, Dan. Thank you, you Dan. Bet. Classes in some West Fargo schools went to the dogs today. That's up next at 6. Folks, why settle for some teeny-weeny chicken sandwich made by Burger Boys? Take a big old bite of your Colonel's new Triple Crunch. Not one, not two, but three crunchy white meat strips. Well, you almost need three hands to hold it. Try my new Triple Crunch sandwich. Right now, it's just $1.99. $1.99? I could do that. I'm the Colonel. A new Triple Crunch at KFC. It's just one of five new sandwiches. The future of energy is just down the road. Can you see it? We can, and we'll be there to light your way.
It's the way a good steak sandwich tastes like it came from a steakhouse. And at Subway, it's the way we know when to bring back one of our all-time favorite sandwiches. Introducing the A1 Steak and Cheese Sandwich again. Hot, juicy strips of steak with melted cheese, served on fresh baked bread, and topped with A1 steak sauce. Try any one of Subway's hot, homestyle soups, like chicken noodle or cream of broccoli. A great addition to any value meal. Subway, the way a sandwich should be. No matter what you'll need this winter, you'll probably find it in Mills Fleet Farms Winter Catalog. I need that. You'll find everything. Snow throwers, ice augers. I need that too. Snow tires, insulation, Sorel boots, coats. There's something I really need. Pizza ovens, Nesco roasters, and more. Oh, there's something else I need. Hey, honey, come here and try this. The Mills Fleet Farm Winter Catalog. Everything you need and more. Hey, that's something we need. Darren's in the newsroom to tell us what's coming up after the game. That's yeah. right. After the game tonight, we'll tell you how Clay County and the rest of Minnesota rates when it comes to carting kids who buy tobacco. It turns out the county and many others may have a lot of work ahead of them. A brand new corporate center is now open at Grand Forks. The flood of 97 helped it become a reality. We'll tell you what business owners there think of their new digs. And some people might think that food with soy in it tastes bland, but now you may have a new reason to give it a try. Find out why after the game tonight. Okay, thanks, Darren. We'll All look right. forward to that. Some West Fargo students celebrated Red Ribbon, Ribbon Week mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> with a visit from a four-legged officer. Fargo police officers brought in one of their drug-sniffing dogs to spread an anti-drug message. Bono showed off his obedience skills and drug-sniffing abilities. The canine friend visited four West Fargo schools today. Bono's message is, say no to drugs. And afterwards, Bono barked, I got you, babe. <laughs> You know, I, I'm sorry, but I have flashbacks to the Westminster Dog Kennel show. Yeah, well, let's not go back to that one. <laughs> but I, you're, you'll be happy to hear that we don't have the video recued, Charlie. Thank you. <laughs> yes, indeed. A big night in high school football playoffs, and we'll have it all in the uh, special edition of the Highlight Zone tonight at 10. We have enough material for manager's mailbag. <laughs> yes. Yeah, thanks to Jim Gray. <laughs> yes. Now, I wonder yeah. what kind of reception he'll get at Yankee Stadium tonight, by It'll the way. It'll be interesting. It'll be yeah. interesting to hear what they say, what, yeah. what Bob Costas has to say. There'll be no rain out tonight on Yankee Stadium. Looks good for that, and our Sounds weather looks good, good too. No, we're right. here. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you tonight after the game. Good night. You are watching KVLY-TV 11, the Valley's choice for local news.